With central banks continuing to flood the market with cheap money, one knock-on effect has been a global race to the bottom in terms of currencies. But what are the economic implications? Joining me to discuss is Guillaume Tresca from Credit Article in Paris. The topic of currency wars has been widely discussed, Guillaume, but the mathematical reality is that the world's major currencies can't all be catastrophically weak against each other. So which currencies do you think will be the winners and losers out of the so-called 2013 currency war? So exactly, it is really topical at the moment and definitely we'll have some uh, winners and uh, losers. If you consider that winners are the FX which will uh, continue to appreciate, we think that we may see further appreciation for EMFX at the moment. And on the other hand, the losers, um, if you think that uh, the losers as a, as a country where FX are depreciating, uh, could be the US dollar, um, the Japan yen, uh, at the moment. So it will be, I think, um, a topical uh, issue for this year. We do not, we do think, we think that it is just the beginning and um, it will take time and uh, we have really the feeling that uh, it is a different time now after the Lehman crisis, the turmoil, etc. We are entering in a new phase and we have the feeling that now the EMFX are less driven by risk on or risk on sales but rather by uh, by this uh, currency war theme, so it will be really interesting. Some analysts have stated that wise investors will avoid the lot and go for gold and emerging markets. Would you agree with this sentiment? Yes, we think that, uh, that emerging markets will be very uh, attractive. Uh, we have seen last year that uh, we had a lot of inflows into EM uh, bond markets, especially what we call the hard, um, hard, um, hard debt, so debt uh, in uh, dollar or, or euro. Um, inflows were fantastic and um, it raises concerns regarding maybe a bubble uh, in the EM up debt. And so we think that this year it could be uh, the time for debt in a local currency in emerging countries. So we will rather avoid uh, the main FX, um, the main develop FX, and we will focus on EM countries, especially on the local debt, because we think that there is further room to have lower rates. And in addition, we think that we'll have um, FX application, so you will win on the red side and you will win something on the FX side. So we definitely, and in addition, we think that um, there is a global um, shift towards EM, uh, EM markets. Um, there is um, asset managers are overweighting or are more and more overweighting uh, EM markets. So there is a structural change, a long-term change uh, towards EM countries. So it is a supportive factor and uh, we like EM at the moment. Continuing on EEMs, India and Hungary central banks have cut interest rates by 0.25 basis points, which some experts are saying could be a turning point for India. Do you think this is the most appropriate action to kickstart these countries' economic growth engines? Um, Indian, Indian and Hungarian situations are quite different at the moment. In India, there, is, um, there are two things. On the one hand, the central bank decided to cut rates, so we think that it is uh, supportive for the Indian rupee. And in addition, we know that the government is currently implementing um, new laws to ease business uh, business rules. Uh, they try to liberalize uh, some uh, the retail market, uh, the gas markets. So there is a sugar change in India, and it is really supportive for the Indian rupee. And we think that it will be really a positive driver for the Indian rupee over the next few months. In Hungary, it is different. Uh, real rates are very high, the monetary international conditions are very tight, so the central bank has definitely to ease um, the monetary policy, but we are less aggressive than the markets, uh, which are seeing um, something like 100 BP uh, rate cuts over the next six months. So we think that Hungary will continue to ease monetary policy, but at a more gradual pace, because at the moment the Hungarian front is weak, and uh, we know that the Hungarian external debt is very high, so it means that the uh, Hungarian central bank has, um, in a certain manner, has to uh, keep at a certain level the Hungarian foreign. The Hungarian foreign has not to depreciate too sharply due to the fact that the external debt is very high. So we continue to see 
further monetary policy in Hungary, but at a more gradual pace. On that note, the florent rebounded from its longest losing streak in eight months before policymakers met. But what will be the main factors driving it forward? So regarding the Hungarian forint, we think that at the current level, the Hungarian forint is weak. It is clear that there are some concerns in Hungary, there are large macro imbalances, but um, the, the, the recent depreciation um, is, um, has, been, um, has been far-fetched in our view. So we think that there is some potential for appreciation. Um, the Hungarian foreign can go to 290 versus euro. So it is a small appreciation, but we think that um, the appreciation over the next six or 12 months will be uh, very gradual. Because as, man, as I mentioned previously, the macro imbalances are very large in Hungary. There are still some concerns regarding the external debt. Um, the government still have to negotiate with the IMF. So there is a lot of concerns, and so it could cap the Hungarian for interpretation. Cleon, thank you for your all-encompassing analysis today. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Well, that's all we've got time for at the moment, but for more exclusive interviews and press reviews, please do click back to Dicoscopy TV. Bye for now.